pre-K pause. Hey, what's up, Teachers Off Duty podcast fans? Come here. We have some big news. Like, really big. Like, I cannot even wait to tell you. No, seriously, you might pee your pants. Yes, even with the teacher bladder. We are taking the show on the road. Vroom, vroom, beep, beep. We're going on tour. That's right, the Teachers Off Duty podcast, uh, it's coming to a city near you. It's gonna be epic. Mind blowing. (laughs) The night of your life. Get ready to come and laugh and go off duty with us. And experience the show like you've never seen it before. Like imagine listening to the podcast, but in the same room with us and with drinks. This means more crazy stories and some special surprises. Boston friends. Washington DC friends. And my hometown of Philadelphia friends. Tickets are now available. Get your tickets now because they're going fast. See you soon guys. I'm just so excited. Going on to, we're going on to. I'm gonna need some wine. You guys know what season it is. It's parent-teacher conference time, and we're talking about it on Teachers Off Duty Podcast. Tune in. Welcome back to another episode of Teachers Off Duty Podcast. <laughs> Don't laugh at me, Vic. <laughs> Draw my face. <laughs> See, I've been getting made fun of all week. For <laughs> all weekend, for no matter what I do, I just get made fun of. And then Devin, he's even making fun of me. Listen. He's just looking at me. He's like, this. he just see it in his eyes. Yeah, I now, didn't even have to say anything. I just we've... motioned to Vic. I was like, look at him. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone looking so laugh. stupid. We found a new reason, though, to make fun of Gabe because he scared the crap out of Tell last night. Oh, my God. You have to tell the story. Okay, so. Well, first off, sorry, guys. This is Devin Siebel. The, the Devin Siebel. He's been the here Devin before, Siebel. so I'm like, we yeah, know that's Devin. True. So they, it's like we got to reintroduce. They know me. I yeah, know. yeah. <laughs> They're probably like, who are the other people with him? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, that's not his podcast. <laughs> right? Because you have your own podcast. Yes, I do. Crying in my car, a podcast Crying for teachers. <laughs> that's shameless plug. I have to right. you have to look in for just a second and there's like a brief pause because they're gonna put a graphic up. And then it's off. And then we're good. Yeah, that was the is crying it, is, in my car is logo. It, is it your car just going by crying? It is, yeah. I love that. <laughs> Me crying in it. And I love you that. crying in it. And us I mean, running over to, the uh, principal. I need and, to get one of those, like, <laughs> fathead posters of Devin's face crying. And I, I yeah. can just hold it up at all my PDs like and, like, Stanley. teacher meetings and I stuff. I like that idea. I'm going to do it. I'm going to trademark a that. A crying Devin. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm down. <laughs> Uh, well, to make it a TikTok trend, you know, uh, crying in your car. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. Teachers can just, you know, film themselves crying in their car. Oh, I like that. And th- that sounds really uplifting and <laughs> like we're really doing a lot. I'm more of a scream in my car type of guy. No, you're, you're a scream in your sleep type of guy. <laughs> um, so conferences are coming up and I am like, I dread conferences every freaking year. I don't care how many times you've done them. Every time they suck. One of the weirdest things that I realized once I became a teacher is there are so many couples that are so okay fighting in public and arguing in public. It is so like uncomfortable. I've had it so many times when like when spouses would start arguing and yelling at their kid and I'm just kind of sitting there like all right, let's wrap this one up. Like don't feel like you have to stay. (laughs) You can go. Go no. to the Applebee's and talk this out. There you go. <laughs> it's over, over a two for 20. Uh, we're going to stop the conference and wait for Child Protective Services yeah. to join us. And <laughs> that's, but see, here's the thing. Uh, you you guys, you know, the younger kids, um, conferences for high school level is me sitting in a room by myself going, why did I do this? Exactly. And, uh, they don't they have never, to come to you, right? They never. Well, they just don't. They just don't. <laughs> they just don't show up. Did your parents go to your high school conferences? Mine? Yeah. Um, I had an IEP, so I th- they did. Oh. They had to. Sorry, I didn't mean to, like, she, she's out like, you on the internet. No, no, no. I talked, talked She was like, your parents look like they didn't yeah. care. <laughs> yeah. Like, your parents don't. It's like, um, it was an uphill battle every day. <laughs> nah, because my parents definitely didn't go when I was in high school. Like, at that point, like, I got good grades. So, like, they're like, there's no reason for us to be there. So, you're no. at that point, a lost cause. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like the opposite way, too, is like, they you get good grades, and they're like, yeah, we don't need to be there. And then they're failing, and they're like, yeah, we don't need to be there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna do this on your own 
too. That's Mar- how it is with uh, my students. Like so, yeah, with your students, how is the setup there? Is it like like the parents come with the kids? Like I don't know the elementary. World. It depends. Like there are some families that like bring the whole crew, and then there are some that are like I'm gonna bring my kids, but lock them out of the room while I'm talking to you. Mm-hmm. And then there are some that literally just bring them in and don't watch them at all. And then they go like rampant, like destroying my stuff. Mm -hmm. And I like as an elementary teacher, like I account for that. I know that people are going to come with their children. So I like put out things on the carpet that they can like play with. And I don't care. They will take the entire bin of Legos, dump it all over the floor. And then they won't clean it up and they'll move to like. I have like a reading station. They can sit and read a book and have it read to them. They'll go over there and pull out all the books and don't put them back. And then they'll take all the flexible seating and toss it around the room. And the parents are just watching this happen. And I'm like, I could never. I always give them a reminder too because like once they leave, they don't clean it up. No, well there are some. There are some that are like clean this up and they like yell at their kids. But I'm like, why wouldn't you be like no? Do you prefer to have the child there? So, because like I, my kid is, you know, in elementary school, and I had a conference with the teacher, and I didn't bring my child. I and to one of them, and I was like, I just want to talk one on one about what's going on. And then the other one, I found out that he was doing better, and I was like, Can we have a conference? And I brought him to intentionally have the teacher and myself have a conversation about how awesome he's doing, so he knows that Crazy. that's a good thing to keep keep it up. Yeah. You know, so I I th- feel like there's times where you should and. Should shouldn't have the kid in the room when you're talking to them. I agree. I'm like indifferent with that. Like it doesn't bother me either way. I think there are benefits to both. And like there are sometimes things you just want to talk about the parent about with the parents. But majority of the time, like I like when the kids are in the room too, because it holds them accountable. And like, okay, I had a couple of, of kids that are like, they're on IEPs, but like they're very, very like, barely qualified as an IEP. And so I'll talk to the parents and be like, there's like, they have every ability to do this, 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 and this, and their grade is this. Um, And I'm like, I'm like telling them like, oh, they have a study guide. They have this, they have this I send home. And the, the parents just go, really? I didn't know about that. And <laughs> the they like, look is the best. Yeah, yeah, they death stare their child. And I'm not trying to get the kid in trouble, but I'm like, mm, you messed up. I love that <laughs> like, moment when, when you tell the parents what's going on and then the parents just slowly turn and uh-huh. look at the kid like, oh, that's not what you told me. Yeah. And you just know right away like, oh, this is not going to go good once they get in the car. This no. is not going to go good for them. Yeah, and I, I have a few students like that this year that are like, you know, trying to – play it like their parents are the ones that aren't helping them. And I'm like, no, you don't take anything. I give you home. I like having just the parents there because for not even like talking about the kiddo, but because we get to see the kids every day. So it's nice to have that partnership with the parents. I also think there are several times if you want to come and pick up sometime or whatever, where we can have a conversation with your kiddo there. But I think it's nice to just have the parents and I don't want all the siblings to be there because the same thing as you, they dump out all the toys and then I have to be like, okay, 10 minutes, clean up the counting bears and they d- then they leave. And then I just have the next one, the next one. So you're at school until eight o'clock because that's when it's scheduled. And then you're at school till 12 o'clock trying to clean up. I, I always get a kick out of finding out how many parents are just truly so gullible with their kids. I remember this happened a number of times. So I'll be in, having a conference and I'll tell the parents about like a situation that happened. Like clearly the kid messed up, they were in the wrong. And I tell them the situation and the parents will be like, well, you know, we actually talked to Johnny about that. And Johnny kind of, he had this perspective. He said, this is what happened. And I'm like, no, I watched it. Right. I'm a full grown adult that like, I'm just telling you what I saw. Johnny's 12 and he's gonna lie about it because he's a kid. I'm an adult and a professional. No, your kid is lying. Like this is actually what happened. Your kid was in the wrong. <laughs> My child says he wrote that. You're like, this is the constitution. <laughs> you know? It's just, mm, it, it looked familiar, but I just, I don't constitution know. in science class. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> but he said he made it in his own words. Right. It was, you know, he, I, I watched him research it. <laughs> he paraphrased. Yeah. He copy pasted. <laughs> uh, all by himself but so th- this is the thing with these with these kids and doing like um these parent teacher conferences uh so is it required in elementary no matter if they're doing good or bad because i mean i feel like 
you know, it's one of those things where I've got my kids in, you know, in elementary school. So I'm not an elementary teacher. I'm learning about what you guys do through my children. Required. Yeah. yeah. And, but I, I get like when my kid's struggling in one thing, it's like conference, you know, just it's just so. And I'll be like, OK, we need to talk about it. But um, some teachers like just do everybody. I mean, are you like a everybody or yeah, struggling? Only? So I think it depends on the school. Um, I know my school legally, we have to schedule everyone a conference. Mm-hmm. Um, so like I will send out, um, a conference form. I will send out a Google form. I will make notes on our little page that we have. And 90% of the people sign up for like a fall conference and whoever doesn't, I schedule them one and send them home a slip in the spring. It's a completely different story because like nobody wants to come in the spring. Mm -hmm. So like our conferences are like in a week and a half. And, um, so I'll have parents that, are like the straight A student parents that are the first ones to turn in the conference form. And then everybody else is like, deuces, I'm good. And the kids that are failing, we do like a Hunger Games style where we bright like <laughs> cannon fire and we put their picture up in the sky. <laughs> and they're like, that's the one. And then the parents are like, oh my God, my kid's an idiot. And uh, they're like, I have to go. <laughs> no. we're, we're going through a rebrand at my school where like our spring conferences, nobody shows up. Like it's really hard to get them there. So we try to create like an incentive structure to get people there. And we're trying to be creative. Yeah, I was going to say that's what I would do. Yeah, uh, except they're 12. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) The parents. (laughs) parents. Zima. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, we're trying to be creative with it because our numbers are down with parent-teacher conferences. And I think parent-teacher conferences as a whole need a rebrand because Mm -hmm. they're seemingly operated the same way as we did it 20 years ago before you could check the grades online, before you had constant communication with teachers. And I'm curious, like, how many really cool schools out there do it new and do it right? You know what I mean? I never thought of it like that, but you're absolutely right. Like, parents have access to their kids' grades at all times. But I will say, they don't look at it. Yeah. They, like, I'll, I'll have parents that will freak out and it's because, like, I've, I've told this before. Like, I have a student who's a straight-A student. She missed, like, one point on a quiz, and her her parent was calling me that day. And I had to, like, talk them off the ledge because they were like, my kid is failing. I'm like, no, they just missed one point. It's okay. Yeah. Then they'll have the, the parents that just don't even care to sign in and look at any progress book grades or, like, what are their grades like? I'm like, well, you know. You have the power to see them Mm -hmm. all the time. And we gave you that login at back to school night, which (laughs) you didn't show up for. So do you check your children's grades? Do Yes, I I check their grades. How old are your kids? But they they, they just have like checks and stuff. So at the end of the week, I get a packet of papers. So uh, they're six and seven. Uh And so I get a packet of papers with check marks, S's, whatever. At that point, okay, okay. So like I'm elementary school, but I'm upper elementary. Mm -hmm. In fifth grade, like we have progress books that like they get physical grades like a b c d whatever not e but (laughs) i was like wait in like the younger elementary grades i know that they're standards based so it's either like mastery or like i don't know what what's the other one it's lollipop or not yeah that's it what yeah Yeah. (laughs) did you get the treasure box good okay you're in in. i was always like a frowny face at the bottom it was like "Mm, when we were in school it was like s's s's o's u's n's I don't know like what not completed or not, something. Not smart. But not I was just smart. like not good. <laughs> my, my favorite thing about this, so this is a good parent teacher conference. Is I got called in for a conference with uh, teachers for my son who has an IEP, yeah. and so we had multiple people involved. Yeah. And um, and it's so funny because I walk in and I sit down, and this one teacher across from me, she's like. <sighs> and I was like, <laughs> Hey, I said, How, How's my kid doing? She goes. I watch all of your videos. And I was like, oh, great. Uh, How's my kid doing? She's like, do you understand? My husband and I, we we drink alcohol at night and we put you on YouTube and uh, we just watch all your videos on YouTube. And I'm like, how is my child doing? (laughs) You You have to wear a mask at the next conference. Can my kid read? Yeah, but I think like a voice changer and a mask. I I am Mr. Shebold. But the teachers, like they know me from the videos and stuff. So it's funny when I go in and they don't know that I'm the dad and they put two and two together. Oh, Seabold, Seabold. Oh, okay. You know, so that, then I get a little preferential treatment. Right. 
<laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't get a reference retriever. I, I always <laughs> love when I hear my coworkers using the same one-liners for every conference, and oh. I'm guilty of it too. Oh, yeah. Where like whenever you've got like wait, um, do you guys all sit together? No, and I'm glad how we have our setup where we are like my team area, but we're all in our own individual room. So like okay. the, we have four. Our core classes are all in the pod, but mm. we're back in our classrooms, which I like because. I don't like if I'm gonna have an uncomfortable conversation with a parent about their kid like misbehaving and having issues, I don't want other parents around to hear that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's just I, I wouldn't want that as a parent. I I I wouldn't, but I always laugh at the one liners because I'll I'll hear like my coworker, she ends almost all of her conferences when it's a good kid. She'll go, It probably took you longer to drive here than the actual conference was, and it always kills. They always Be laugh. Fair, it's South Dakota. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. They drove 14 days. Um, <laughs> I always close my conferences on, so here's the withdrawal paperwork. Right. And uh, yeah. <laughs> and then just hope they're the best. So what are, what are pre-K? Those, uh, what what are bring pre- those numbers down. <laughs> I bring those so numbers funny. down. What, it, what it makes me so happy coming on this podcast is you guys are like, really good elementary level teachers and 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 middle and then I'm high school and like I don't care. <laughs> like I I think it's just so funny. You're like, I you know I'm just hopeful that there's gonna be better opportunities. And I'm over here like your child is the worst. <laughs> and, and and like that's the bluntness of high school is like and the parents go, you're right. <laughs> what, do you have another child we can okay. exchange him for? Is there a lost and child found? Can I put him in the box of the fire station? Yeah. Like <laughs> that's the thing is like it's the expectations change and it's for parents too I'm so involved with my kid right now in elementary but I can already see like high school I'm gonna uh, I just I, I don't know what it is our mentality we just get like just they're older they're and older get humans of, like yeah. Yeah. you're famous so like when you get the IEP plus the subscription because you're famous <laughs> yeah. IEP plus. you have to go <laughs> it comes with Mandalorian season yeah. three <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Early access. <laughs> What's it like doing pre-K parent-teacher conferences? So it depends where you're at. So if you're at a private school, it's just kind of like, you know, we pay $2,000 a month, so we're not going to meet with you. But if you're doing like Makes a- Makes sense. Right. They're Makes like, sense. they're like- Our butler will be there at noon. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And they don't want to come on their day off and all that. Like, what, but their like, day off. I pay $2,000 to come to this, or to send my child to this school, so I want less of your time. Yeah. But if you're at a public school, um, usually your pre-K program will be some kind of um, federally funded Head Start or, or uh, state funded program. Um, and in that case, you are mandata- mandated. Mandated. That's a new one. That is a new one. Um, I'm loving the vocabulary you used yeah. today. That's, I, I searched for that on an incognito tab. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> keep it that way. And mandated. don't. Yeah, mandated. Uh, right, um, it speaks real goodly. One. I heard the word uh, man- Mandalorian. Yeah. And then, you and then I that. heard mandated. And that's how dyslexia works. <laughs> um, you have to do two home visits a, a year. And then you have to do two parentage conferences a year. Um, so the parents are obligated to do that. And if they don't, then their child can't stay in the program. So you actually get to say, bye, you know, like, it here's the It me that you physically go to their house. And what it used to be for when I was at Hester in Indiana was that parent tutor conferences had to be done in their home, too. So although it was two parent tutor conferences, two home visits, they were all in the home. See, OK, I get where they're going with that. I don't like that they have home field advantage. No, that would make me feel intimidated going into somebody else's space and telling Come on them. In, sit on the floor, Chris. You know what I mean? Let's, let's talk. <laughs> it's, it's we're a couchless family here. <laughs> well, yes, though. And my my aunt worked for twenty some years at at Head Start, and so when I started teaching there and I was doing my first round of home visits, she was like giving me the rundown of what to wear, and I was like, <laughs> Iris, it's fine. Um, there's a reason why. So some of the houses you go to are super clean and, and nice. Some of them are not. And so she's like, turtleneck, so things can't crawl down this. And and boots, and tuck in the socks. And I was like, mm-mm. So I remember sitting at a home visit with a parent. I have a bunch of paper for the sign. I always did that. <laughs> I know, it's like signing a mortgage. But it's like, you know, trying to, I'm doing this. I'm like shaking my foot the whole time because there's bugs crawling all over my feet. Oh, no. And I'm like, mm, Okay. It was oh. <laughs> terrifying. Mm, terrifying awful i hate to make light of that because like you know there are families that are struggling struggling absolutely and they can't help it that's why you you wear the stuff so you don't have to like 
make them feel bad about right. it. Like if it's fine right. if it. Then you realize you brought it from the school. You're right. like, oh, that's me. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was my bad. <laughs> it was tell all along. It was. It was. I was the one who brought this to your home. Have you guys ever had it where a parent comes and they start talking about their kid and you have no idea who they're talking about? Yes. Yeah. That ha That's happened to me when like the parent has a different last name than the kid and they just think, oh yeah, the teacher definitely knows that we have different last names. I don't know. I don't. I've got See, 120 kids. I don't have your your name memorized too. Know, 20, that used to know. happen to me. And then on the parent teacher conference form, I put your or parent Dude, or guardian name. I put that student name. I put that on there, and they never fill it out. I put it on there. I'm like, oh, parents will see this. They don't fill it out, and it's no, always the, the ones that you need to out. that don't fill it out. First thing I have on the form. So if they don't fill it out, that's on them. But like, I. I'll look up the kid. At least, is they put the kid's name on there? Like I only have seventeen kids, so like it's different for me. But like I'll look up the kid to make sure that the parent. But like when I schedule them, that way I know who's coming in next. But even sometimes when I when they come like out of order, I'll like pop in the hall and be like, "And you're here for?" And they're like, "So and so." I'm like, "Ah, you." It, the worst is when you have like a science sheet and you're like, "You know what? I forgot how to spell their name." They're like. Dave? Always do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, Dave. And the last is that Miller? with a Y? <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. Uh, sorry. My, about that. I'm so sorry. Not necessarily conferences, but like open house, which I feel like are similar to conferences because you're you're like meeting with parents. Yeah. So I had a parent um, that came in, and it was obviously the first time I had ever met this family. And they walk in, and they go, "You the teacher?" I'm like. Oh. Yeah, that that's me. I'm the teacher. <laughs> so I'm in this room and they're like, okay, you're not gonna like shame us and like ask us stupid questions, are you? Like that's the first thing you they mean said like, to me. Are you the teacher? <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> I was like, um, I, I'm not sure what you mean. And they were like, Well, that B word teacher last year Ooh. kept asking us all these stupid things and telling and we tried to make us feel stupid because <laughs> we didn't know how to teach the math. I was like I would never do that. Like, <laughs> I'm like, I don't know why. I don't, I, no, I'm like, I don't know what happened last year, but you know, you can ask me questions and I'm not going to shame you. But like, that was my first interaction with them. And, and so what they didn't that, realize is you failed that kid and he was back in your class again. <laughs> <laughs> that stupid teacher. Nah, yeah, they that B word teacher, that was me. <laughs> oh, and I was like, I was like, how am I supposed to recover from this? Like, what do I do? What do I do? <laughs> like, have you have you guys ever had to end a conference like short because it was getting really uncomfortable? Yes. I've what? had I haven't had that, but I've had like administration sit in on my conference Ooh, because of that. Yeah. Yeah. Tell what when did you have to end it short? So we were doing a home visit and um that we were talking with the mom and the mom like really wasn't understanding the paperwork aspect of it. It was me and my co teacher. Mm -hmm. And dad comes in and it, it just gets very tense. And we're like, this is so strange. And dad's talking, dad's talking. And he takes off his coat and he turns and I can see this tattoo. And it is a white supremacy tattoo on his neck. And I was like, oh God, oh God. Ooh. And I see it and I'm nudging my co-teacher and she's just talking about her program. She's like, yeah. And uh, Mr. Williams, he's Puerto Rican. I'm like, mm-mm. <laughs> And she goes, and um, he speaks Spanish with the kids, so he teaches them Spanish. I'm like, okay, girl, <laughs> I don't even do that. <laughs> and so I turned my I turned my alarm on my phone, and I put it down, and it's the ringer sound though. So I was like, oh my god, it's our super uh, a fire in the well. <laughs> and we left, and then I was telling our um, our director of education, and they were like, you do not have to go to that house anymore. And then we had them sit in on the conferences at school. It was Wait, you were in their house. I was in northern Indiana in their house, little mini, uh, the entire walkway, mini Confederate flags, the entire garage painted that. The entire history of the family, they always lived in Indiana, never As soon as you else. saw the tattoo, you were like, so do you have any Michelob Ultras <laughs> yeah, like, that uh, I can drink as a straight white hetero male? <laughs> yeah, I was like, um, yeah, great uh, place, y'all. Yeah. Yeah, I, I immediately started talking about every sport I knew. I was like, you know, dodgeball, cricket, you know. Uh, LeBron got a touchdown yeah, yesterday. Like, oh God, you know, that, that soccer kicker of the, of the volleyball team. I just, everything. I said, I love the Olympics, you know. And then it would have been so funny if he was like, girl. <laughs> you better <laughs> that too. You better don't, you know. Yeah, it's like, yeah. Um, you know, he was in love with me. I think oh, that was, was it. Yeah, yeah for sure. Uh, no, he, he knew me. <laughs> um, yeah, that was probably my favorite moment of uh, conferences I've ever had. Devin, have you ever had to cut one short because it was just getting uncomfortable? I've had some where they've been cut short because I've been yelled at. 
Ooh. Oh, wow. yeah. So like the, the it's just kind of the administration's like, okay, and we're done, you know? Mm -hmm. And and that's the kind of, I, I had a student a while ago that had threatened children in the class, like with violence. And the mom said that I was inciting it because I was talking about World War II. Ah, and definitely your in fault. the history class, why would I do that? I side with the parents on that one. <laughs> and, uh, and so <laughs> when I apparently did this instruction about World War II, it triggered the kid to yeah. threaten other children in the as class. As it normally does. Yeah, mm -hmm. with death. And ah. uh, so then obviously the kid was being expelled and uh, she tried to say it was my fault for teaching history. Huh. So, uh, but she t said that very uh, aggressively, hand on the table, leaning over in my face, cussing me out. And they were like, okay, time to go. And I was like, yeah, time to go, time to go. This is ridiculous, just like the Nuremberg trials. <laughs> you know, just trying to trigger her. Like, She's like, what is that word? Let's see how deep it goes. Yeah, man just grabs the duct tape. Like. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, my school, we've got 15 minute blocks for the conferences. And the parents know they have a 15 minute block. And I always have some that will go over and just keep talking and talking. No. Oh, I don't but, believe that. Yeah, so I, I always do, like once it's starting, starting to get long, I'll, I'll stand up and kind of start shooing them out the door. Mm -hmm. And I'm amazed at how many parents can't pick up on the social cues. No, like, don't. hey, you're 25 minutes into this 15-minute conference and all these people in the lobby, yeah, they're waiting in line. Like they, they're going to come in here. And I had that last year where I, I stood up and started walking them out and they just wouldn't leave. They sat at the table. You know what would be great? Yeah. This is minded. great. We need to do this. I'm 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 trademarking this right now. Okay. Parent teacher conferences with the chess speed board where it's like your kid's failing and she's like, What are you doing about it? And then and but it's counting down on seconds, yeah. you know, and we're just like back and forth, you know. I think that would be great. Uh -huh. You know, because like that's this. the minute count. Yeah. You only get fifteen minute match and and so we're going back and forth and you got your time to speak and only when you're clicked on can you move, you know, and <laughs> talk about it. I'm telling you. Speaking of work, we have someone that wrote in um Dear Tom. Uh, parent teacher conferences are coming up, and I'm a first year teacher. Usually, I get excited for this time to connect with parents, but this time around, I may have connected with a parent a little too well. A few weeks ago, I matched with one of my students' dads on Tinder. Not only is that a problem because he's a student's parent, but he's also married. Him and his wife are coming later this week. What should I do to avoid this awkward situation? I think it's important to know a couple things. Is he rich? Was there trouble in the marriage before? You know, um, are you a homewrecker? If you can marry him. <laughs> Just that question in general. Right. Are you like, a homewrecker? Are, are you a homewrecker? Maybe. I think for me, it's like if there's financial potential there and you don't want to teach for the rest of your life, maybe destroy the marriage. I don't know. Yeah. No, I think that in that case, one, it's it, I would not bring it up at the conference because you're talking about the child. Um, block the father now. I don't know why you'd swipe right. You didn't. It sounds like you had a conference at the beginning of the school year. Also, you don't know the makeup of someone's marriage. Maybe Dynamic. they're in a, maybe they're in an open marriage, and you're being super judgy. But that's not for you to decide. You should never date a child's um, parent. So just delete. First time you marry, marry for money. Second time you marry for love. So this teacher, what she can do is she can be if, the love. If you're willing, no, if you're willing to home wreck, oh, go for yeah. the money. Like, go for it. I don't know that I like that But see, phrase. that's confusing because the man's, then that was his second marriage and he's marrying for love, but yeah. she's marrying for money. Ooh, a mix. Wow. Mm. That, they say opposites attract, right? Have you ever had a, a, a parent have, a, have a, a crush on you? I had, I taught middle school and I had a, a woman one time walk up to me in the car line and she goes, oh my gosh. She goes, if I were in middle school again. And I was uh, like, you'd be illegal. Get away from me. <laughs> I uh, hate like, when people why would say, you say that. that. Did yeah. you say that? She said, yeah, that's what I said. Good, I'm glad I, you did. I don't understand. Like people like just go, yes. yeah, I'm going to hit on you. One time, one, once upon a time, I look like you. And then uh, I taught for 13 years and now I have man boobs. And <laughs> it's so frustrating because I'm like, you know, I was hot once. And, uh, you know, and now I'm, I'm, this is it. This is it. Damn the future of teaching. Now I wear a sports I'm in a Ghostbusters school. shirt. <laughs> You know, <laughs> on the teachers off duty podcast. On the teachers off duty podcast. I don't even have water yeah, in my mouth. <laughs> oh my they, they don't even give you water and when you paper get older. In it. Gosh. Um, we all have water. You just don't. That's fine. Yeah, because we're not. It's a gremlin. Yeah, you know? no, but I'm no, just, they, I'm just entertaining. They would hit every right once now. They I would can't. hit on me every once in a while. And I would just kind of like, you know, deflect yeah. and, and push them off. And uh, then, you know, uh, eventually they stop hitting on you. Then they're like. <laughs> 
<laughs> it went from it went from like it was like someone like, hit on me, please. We yeah, really like your comedy. <laughs> <laughs> the next thing you know, I'm at some white supremacist right. house. Like, yeah. are you interested? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you love me, choose me. I, I get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's actually why I was that's there. That's more so my comment section than parents. I actually t- like teach yes. their children. Like the comments are just nasty. If I would, if I oh, if you were my if teacher, I well, you even four every day. I'm like. Ugh. No, a audible of, a gag. Of, no, a lot thank of, you. Uh, woman creator uh, TikTokers, I see comments off all that, and and sometimes like they'll leave the comments on, thinking, "Oh, this is inconspicuous. This isn't like I'm not in anything provocative," and they still like creep their way in, and Always. I'm like, oh, "Okay, all right, Always. I get why the comments are off." No, I had a conference. Well, it was like the last day of school, and a parent was like, their grades had come out like for their child. And they showed up at my school. You had to preface for the yeah, child. As, as opposed to for the <laughs> dog. Grades are out. You Listen, know, for the child. Let's and, uh, be real. Do we grade the parents? Yes, yeah, we do grade I the do. parents. I do. Yeah. That'd be no. fun. That'd be cool. <laughs> but they showed up at my school at 7 a.m. And I'm in my room getting ready. The kids aren't even there for like another hour. And all of a sudden I hear a message come over the, the PA system. And they're like, Mrs. Wooly, so-and-so's um, dad is here to see you. And I was like, um, what is um, a, a dad, why? And I'm just immediately like shook because I was alone for one thing. And, and an I'd, hour before school, how did he know you were there? An hour before school, why? Yeah, why did he know I was there? Yeah. Is, is a question. Um, but they were like, they were wondering if they could meet with you. And I was only a second year teacher, so I was dumb and was like, I guess so. Sit them down. Yeah. Nope. So yeah, I guess so. So then he comes strolling down the hallway and sto- like I was in my doorway. I'm like, I'm not going in this room with you. So I'm standing in my doorway and he like props himself up against my door, like the cool guy stance. Mm-hmm. Like, you know how they're like. The AC Slater. Yeah. yeah. And he's like, <laughs> <gasps> yes. We were just talking about that yesterday. Mario Lopez. Um, but he's like, so I, I saw the grades and I was like, yeah, like they did really well. Like, congrats on a great year. And he was like, well, but. Our our family, we are all about straight A's, and I saw that, you know, Timmy got a B. And I was like, well, I mean, he's in fifth grade, and a B is good. I'm like, that's that's a good grade. So I would be proud. And he's like, well, I was just wondering. And he reaches his arm up Little. to touch my arm. Ooh. And I take a huge step back. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I was just wondering if there was anything we could do to, you know, maybe help him move his grade up. And, you know, I'm so oblivious that I was like, um, Did you no, say yes? Like, no. <laughs> the, the, the dad is like, we've got one of two options. You get the kid tutoring, try to sleep with his teacher. Right. Yeah. Option B. Yeah. No, I, oh, God. I, I didn't catch on at first. And I was just sitting there like, I'm like, well, actually, I'm like, the grades already just like, they're already in. So there's nothing I can do to change them. And he was like. Are you sure? And like giving me the look and like the weird voice. Yeah. (laughs) I was like, well, let me know if there's anything that we can do. And I was like, yeah, no, it's the last day of school. Grades are already done. Okay, thanks. Bye. And then like I beelined into my co teacher's room and slammed the door shut. And he left. But I was like, that is the creepiest thing that has ever happened to me at a school meeting with a parent because never in my life did I think that that would happen to me, you know? That's just really nasty. Like, why are you literally going to your fifth grade teacher, son's teacher, to bribe them? I think teachers need to lean in on that. You need to be like, I'm moving Saturday. Uh, Start at 7. You can come by, lift some boxes. Uh, You know what I'm doing this year? I'm going to have a tip jar set out. (laughs) Yeah. I'm going to do that. I'm going to see what, what happens. Am I going to lose my job over it? Maybe I don't know. But you know what? If I if, if I've got drive through drive through restaurants that are asking for tips, I should ask for a tip you, you as a teacher. Literally, yeah, I'm saying that's teacher what I'm saying. tip Tuesday. Teacher tip Tuesday. There you go. You go around with your iPad to the students' desks and, yeah. and you're like ten percent, eighteen percent, twenty percent. Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, have them, yeah. No, it's a group larger than six. We get gratuity. That's true, guys. We got tips at the private school. Oh, you got, you guys tips, got tips at the private at the, school. We all of a sudden hate tell. Um, <laughs> it was bonuses for each holiday, what? for random holidays. I, my first year teaching, I... Wait, who tipped you? The parents? Yes. The rich parent PTA. Yeah, a little different in our world. No, I meant like school. admin or parents. The, like, parent, the, oh the, the, the parents would give money to, the, to the, the PTA, and then they would give us, like, uh, they'd divide it out, and we'd get, like, it on a card, right? Like, a, But the parents then 
of your kids, they'd give the teacher a gift. And like, I remember doing that and they're like, oh yeah, parents, you know, either money or wine or whatever. And at one of the, my students' parents, she hands me an envelope, but there's like $400 in it. And Ooh. I was like, I made like, one of the years I made like $1,500 on Christmas tips. I swear me? to God. Okay, where's the school? Are they hiring? You do not want to work at that school. Um, <laughs> I resigned I'll from there. I'll be the judge of that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, a little no. <laughs> different in my world. The only tips that I'm getting are like, te- that are like parents are like, hey, I'm gonna give you a little tip on how to teach. You know, they'll yeah. say something really stupid. Like, See, I taught in a rough area. They'd hand me the envelope and be like, put $400. <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorry, They're actually robbing you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> put your wallet in the back. Yeah. Are you gonna tip teachers though? Cause you have that power now as a parent. Yeah. Um, I, I get them good gifts, really good gifts. Yeah, I mean they they get good. Yeah, I mean, but it's elementary. They school. get tickets to my show. <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah. actually, they have. Oh, I like that though. Yeah. That's because, literally I mean, they though, like, you. like all parents that are teachers give great gifts. Yeah, those are the only parents I get gifts from, honestly. Mm-hmm. And they're so thoughtful. Like some some students will get gifts, but like parents who are teachers think extra like above and beyond which brings me to my next segment good or garbage with gabe my no, name's you gabe. didn't take a pause long enough good good or garbage with gabe i'm talking about whiteboards are all whiteboards created equal no they're not i'm going to talk specifically today about a brand new crisp whiteboard one of the ones that when you write on it I don't know you why, can but this sounds racist <laughs> 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 Chris, the new, the yeah, happening. Yeah, yeah. The best one. The best one. <laughs> oh, what are you doing? Not the so, shitty whiteboard. Set the scene. Take out your expo marker. Brand new one. Get a little slant on it. You start write, writing on it. Writing on your can whiteboard. I have, can I have some sound effects for the writing? <laughs> sniff the marker. <laughs> Just kidding. You got to sniff the marker. You're right, writing on the whiteboard. You get done. You made a couple mistakes. You take your eraser. And you wipe it off. And these brand new whiteboards, guess what? It actually erases. And you don't have the stains of your marker on the whiteboard. Because of the old whiteboards, the stains last for like good 20 years. So you can see exactly what the lesson was 10, 15, 20 years ago. But now with these brand new whiteboards, they actually erase. Are they good or garbage? These products are good. I love new whiteboards. What do you guys think? I agree. Um, I don't necessarily think that it's just new whiteboards. I think there's a specific kind. Ooh. There's like the expensive whiteboard that's like uh. solid. And then there's like the cheap whiteboard that like when you press your hand on it, it caves in behind yeah. you. Because pl- they just put plastic it's just, over yeah, it. Yeah, it's just like a film over top mm-hmm. of a piece of like, I don't know, <laughs> corrugated wood. I don't, I don't know materials. They always hold a stain. And the one I have in my room, it holds a stain. And I'm... I'm not going to complain because my school gets me everything I want. But, like, it'd be nice to have those whiteboards. When I was in high school, middle school, we didn't have – we didn't – we had overhead projectors and blackboards. But I don't you think also we grew up in Amishville, so. I, I, <laughs> quite literally, yes. <laughs> yeah. We even talked about it this weekend. But I feel like the new whiteboards are the ones with the new Expo marker or the ones that weave – the residue. No, but the, the really good ones, dude, it's like butter. Oh. Like you write on it and just poof. Butter. Butter. But it depends how long the stuff's up there. Yeah. Like, that is true. We had to have learning objectives and UEQ, LEQ. And I, I wrote um, on the board on the left-hand side, and I would just change the date and teach whatever I wanted. I like Because that. they never checked <laughs> when they came in. So at the end of the year, I was like, let me erase. Oh, that's not going anywhere. <laughs> you know? And then that's the permanent UEQ, LEQ. Yeah. We were, your, yeah. I, your I can statement lasted from August all the way through May. It did. It did. <laughs> and guess what? My evaluation. You dug deep on that, can, that standard. Yeah, every time. Yep, every time. Uh, Lauren, what are some things that your students do that don't make any sense? Well, these are some things that I would talk about with parents at conferences about things that students do that just don't make sense. So um, when a student, and we all can relate, is sent to the principal's office, you know where this is going, you know it, and comes back with a snack. What snack is it? It's a bag of chips. Oh. Why? Always why do we, Why the bag of chips? And why are they getting a snack if I just sent them out of my room? Right. If I sent them to you to like brag about something that they did really well, great, give them a bag of chips. But if I sent them to you because they tried to crush my skull with a chair, please don't give them Doritos. But what did oh, you do to provoke the kid to crush your skull and throw a chair at I, your head? I placed the chair in his hands. <laughs> right. uh, I, I shouldn't have done that. I wouldn't that. give him chips. No. <laughs> <laughs> What would you get angry? <laughs> that he hit me and that he got chips. <laughs> that's always that's always how it is. And then they look at you and they have that look on their face that they just got away with murder. Oh yeah, that mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Yep. Every time. Mm-hmm. Every like, time. I just went. It was like it's the mommy daddy syndrome. Like yeah. when mommy says no, daddy, sa- daddy, daddy says, says yes. Yeah. And I guess and oof. I don't get it's never like Lay's potato chips or like a Chex Mix. It's Cheetos. always like Cheetos, Doritos, Takis, Faritos. I don't know. It's always the ta- Taquitos. It's like always the Eatos and it's always like the everywhere. Dust. Everywhere. Yeah. A Taki dust, a trail of Taki dust from the principal's and office. It's heartbreaking because it's rubbed in twice because then at lunch you go to the teacher break room and there's the vending machine and it only has the oatmeal cookies in it and there's no <laughs> chips and you're like, wow. where did these chips go? Are they all going to children? <laughs> right. <laughs> We're throwing yeah. chairs at the right. teachers. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, one of the things that I... L- that I've gotten really good at with parent-teacher conferences Mm -hmm. is the sandwich method. I am the king of the sandwich method. When you have some kid who's just terrorizing your room every day. And and you you send him out and he comes back with a sandwich. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) With chips in it. it. (laughs) But I do it all the time with, with parents where I'm like, okay, how do I tell this parent nicely that their kid is is just terrorizing my room? And I almost always start off like the beginning sandwich, like with a compliment of, you know what, your kid, He's got a he's got a huge personality and I love it. I love his big personality. But sometimes and then you put in whatever and then you have to end with the positive at the end. So the game that we're going to play today is a sandwich method game. So we have a couple challenge. S- yeah, challenge. We've got a couple scenarios here and we're going to read those scenarios and we're going to talk about how we could sandwich method this scenario into a positive if you're sending this scenario to the parents of the student. Devin's going to blow us all out of the water and what? I don't want him to go first. <laughs> I'll read it and I'll no, give you I'm time kidding. to think about it and come up with a better joke and then I will blow you out of the water. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, this one is your child has no manners and is so disrespectful. Mm. How would I word that? Your child has a fantastic vocabulary. Uh, They used it to call me every expletive in the uh, book. Uh, But I will let you know that I called them that back and (laughs) they appreciated it. That is how to do that. It is. Right. Get yeah. on the child's level. You, you know? have to get on the child's level. Meet them where Especially they're at. Especially in high school. Them where at. Sometimes they teach me curse words I didn't know. Your child tattles on everyone and it's driving me crazy. Your child likes to fight for social justice, <laughs> but sometimes they come to me too often. <laughs> I don't know how to do that one. I love the social justice one. I can put it in my mug because there's no water. (laughs) (laughs) You parched? (laughs) No. Okay. They gave me water. Hope that makes you feel bad. Your child won't ever stop talking and interrupting class. Oh, this is my class. Um, So I I love your child and they're so friendly and sweet, Um, but they um, are constantly, constantly socializing with their other students and that's great, but we need to taper it down to like certain times of the day. But I'm so glad that they are able to vocalize their feelings. That was really the worst good. part is the parent interrupts you yes. in the middle of you <laughs> describing that. They do. My child's such a social butterfly. <laughs> they are amazing. We, are, we don't see that at home. No. Yeah. They say They're not that. like that at home. Okay. Mine says... Oh, jeez. Your child is lazy. Oh, man. (laughs) Your child has so many great skills, and I can tell that they can have a really good education experience, but I think they could put forward a little bit more effort in their science class. I think after they put forward an effort, we can truly see their full potential. Have a great afternoon. Signed off. Have a great afternoon. Was that an email, or were you, like, leaving a voicemail because they didn't answer? That was a great that like voicemail. An email. That, that, yeah. that was like both. Let's see. Stop sending your child to school sick. <laughs> see, but I wouldn't say that. I, I would be like, your child um, has uh, some coughing issues, and um, I will be out tomorrow because I let them cough in my face seven <laughs> times so that I never have to see your child for the next two weeks. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. And that was the bell. Um, thank- <laughs> <laughs> oh, why did I get this one? <laughs> Your child farts 24-7, and they smell really bad. Your child likes to express themselves in a multitude of ways. And they have their very own fun, distinct odor. Scent. <laughs> Scent. How do you do? The fart one. I, it's not farting. It's like, your child crapped themselves again today. <laughs> They're six years old. Let's talk about I think it. Your kid sharded in class, mom and yeah, dad. Yeah, like, <laughs> You need to stop doing your child's homework for them. Ooh. That's a tough one. Yeah. I love that your your child is turning in their homework consistently. You know, it's really hard to see that in every student in my class. 
um, their their work is exceedingly above the fifth grade level, and it's just it's amazing. But I I kind of want to see their own voice a little more and hopefully get a little bit more of a sense of where they're at academically. You were real nice because you said they were above a fifth grade level. Yeah, see, where, <laughs> I taught, where I taught, it would be like, um, listen, your child knows way more than you. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is terrible. You're failing. Oh, here's one. Your child needs to go to bed earlier and stop playing video games so late at night. This is like a real actual situation that, that happens problem. all the time. Um, I would word this like this. Your child on their good days is so exceptional as a student and they can perform very, very well. But lately I've been noticing that they have been tired and a little bit lethargic in class. Is there anything going on at home that might be impeding their ability to perform in school? Yes, I um, swiped I, I right on like the teacher. I feel like my child, <laughs> listening to you, I feel like I did something wrong. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, like, I, like, I, I should watch them. I'm sorry. <laughs> You know, I had I had students that would uh, play video games and they would join me online to play video games uh -huh. and I was ranked number fiftieth in the world in Call of Duty. Are you serious? And they would were join. Really? They'd be like, Mr. Steebo, can we play with you? I'm like, you can try. <laughs> and you and can. like eight seconds in, they're like, I don't want to play with you anymore. Yeah, like, just shut up, kid. Take them. that. Yeah. I think we should leave one for the um for our followers to do. So I'm yes. gonna read one. And then uh, comment what you would say below as we finish this up. So <laughs> this is perfect. Your child picks his nose all the time. <laughs> so I want you all to comment below what you would say to the parent yes. about your child. Yep. And this that, child that is that a genius. Right down there. And if you're, if you're a parent, what would you say to the teacher if they told you your child was picking their nose. And this child is not in elementary school. This child is a junior in high school. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. and, so uh, now in college, what you do? actually. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining us for this episode of Teachers Off Duty and talking about parent-teacher conferences. We will see you next time.